What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the Week 9 CWL Premier League-wide recap. And what an amazing weekend that it was uh, here in Premier. We did have quite a bit of shifting going on uh, within the standing, so we'll go ahead and check that out. Of course, we'll go ahead and check out some insane, beautiful attacks from all of the Highlight Wars. And definitely stay tuned for the very end of the video where we're going to be showing you guys the playoff, uh, the playoff picture as it's getting a little bit more clear, seeing as there's only two more wars left in the regular season. So definitely stay tuned to, to the very end to check that out. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start off. We'll dive straight straight into it. Starting off in the wall breaker division, we have FYSB all alone now in first place as they did pick up a win uh, here in week nine. So they're now at six and three on the season, and they are one war ahead of War Addicts and Emphatic Fury. War Axe taking a loss, Emphatic Fury getting a very big victory. Uh, I do have some replays to show you guys. Uh, from each of these wars, so definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, but we have War Axe and Emphatic Fury both tied for second place, sitting at five and four. And of course, we have Unius Exorcist in fourth place at two and seven. Okay, in the balloon division, we have Bad Intentions, who is still technically in first place as they did defeat Dark Looter X earlier on in the season. But Bad Intentions did take a loss in week nine. We have Dark Looter X who had a forfeit win as the clan they were scheduled uh, to war against did drop out. Uh, so we have uh, Dark Looter X who did pick up an automatic victory. They are also at 6-3. and three. We have COC Hogwarts who also picked up a victory. They are now at 3-6 and six, and they took down none other than Power COC. So a huge performance uh, from COC Hogwarts taking down Power COC. And again, they are at 3-6 and six on the season. We have Axie something still in search for their first victory. And they are currently at 0-9. Fourth place in the balloon division. All right, moving over to the wizard division, we have Above and Beyond who also who picked up a victory. They are comfortably in first place right now through week nine. They are at six and three. We have COC Brawlers very, very tight. Uh, again, Above and Beyond, only one more ahead of COC Brawlers who also picked up a victory. And they have uh, pulled apart. They are a war ahead of Power COC, uh, again, who did take a loss. Uh, they are at four and five on the season. And we have Meet the Kings, uh, who bowed out a little earlier, or kind of mid-season. Uh, they are at 0 and 9. The rest of their wars will be losses on the season. Okay, in the healer division, we have King Jeffrey, who is now two wars ahead of From Molten Lava. KJ sitting comfortably at 7-2, and two, looking very, very promising for the playoffs for them. And they were scheduled uh, to war against Meet the Kings, uh, so they did have a forfeit win. Uh, so King Jeffrey looking very solid going into Week 10. We have From Molten Lava, who suffered a loss. To FYSB, again, they are at 5-4. and four. And we have Art of War, who is in third place. They picked up a victory. We have Gehazi Bomber 2, who took a loss. Both these clans currently sitting at 4-5. and five. Let's go ahead and check out the next four divisions. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and start off within the Dragon Division, where we have Gunma Samurai. Check this out, guys. Gunma Samurai sitting at 8-1. and one. Uh, They are tied with Swarm Synergy, uh, the, the two clans with the best records in Premier through nine weeks. So again, Gunma Samurai at 8-1. and one. They did have a victory. We'll go ahead and check out one of the replays a little later on in the video. And we have Grumpy Old Men who also picked up a victory. Grumpy Old Men is in second place and they are at 6-3. and three. If they had that record in other divisions, they'd be in first place. So a very, very uh, tough division between Gunma Samurai and Grumpy Old Men, uh, both inside of the Dragon Division. It's going to be very interesting to see how this one ends with only a couple wars left in the regular season. And we have Reddit Viper, 
uh, who did take a loss but still put up a very, very good performance. We also have some replays to show you guys from that war. Uh, they did take a loss. They are at 4-5 and five so far in the season. And we have Valar Mogulis sitting at 1-8. and eight. Uh, They are for, uh, fourth place within the Dragon Division. Okay, in the P.E.K.K.A. Division, we have our High Seleke sitting very comfortably, as you can see. Uh, between all the divisions in Premier, for High Seleke has the has the largest lead they are three wars ahead of their second place team uh that being north awakens and dragon rejects both these clans sitting at four and five we have our high seleke sitting at seven and two i also have a text to show you guys from their war as they did pick up a victory in a very very close war so stay tuned and we have kornfeld who is sitting right now in fourth place at three and six okay next we're going to uh, talk about the baby dragon division uh, where we have swarm synergy sitting at eight and one again uh, gunma samurai and swarm uh, swarm synergy the only two clans with a record of eight and one huge shout out to both of these monster clans and we have gotoborg's krieger uh, in second place they are sitting at five and four uh, we have Assassin's Core in third place. They're sitting at two and seven. And of course, we have BD Unbeatables sitting in fourth place, rounding out the Dragon Division, uh, Baby Dragon Division. They're sitting at one and eight. Now, the most competitive division in Premier, and it, it has been this way for quite a few re uh, weeks now, that being the minor division where we have Forbidden who's back in their ways, uh, back in their winning ways as they did pick up a victory here in week nine. They're at seven and two. We have Nottingham, who did suffer a loss uh, to Grumpy Old Ben. Uh, they are sitting at six and three so far of, on the season. And we have One Hive Genesis and Dark Avengers both tied I guess for third place, maybe for fourth place, uh, but both these clans tied at five and four. Again, the bottom two clans within the minor division, both with winning records. And again, stay tuned for the end of the video where we show you guys the playoff picture. All four clans in the minor division, all four of them have a chance to make it to the playoffs. Again, only two more wars left in the regular season. Cannot wait to see how it ends. That is the standing so far through nine weeks in Premier. Now let's go ahead and check out some of the highlighted wars captured here in week nine CWL Premier. All right, guys, let's dive straight into all of the highlighted wars captured from week nine. We'll go ahead and start off with the FYSB and from Molten Lava War. FYSB, this was a very, very close war, guys. Uh, we have FYSB getting the edge over from Molten Lava. The final to this war, 85 to 84, again, ending in FYSB's favor. We'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. And it was very, very close. Again, within one star, uh, FML definitely put up a fight as FYSB has been looking very strong these last few weeks. They were a little shaky in the middle of the season. Some people were questioning this clan. I can tell you with all confidence, FYSB is definitely back to their winning ways. Uh, and this is how they took the victory. Again, we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. Uh, FYSB picking up a solid two 10v10 triples. Uh, their 10v11, they did go three for 10. So they cleared three out of the four Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, I mean, we can we can say with all confidence, every clan could probably, for, for the majority, uh, work on their 10v11 game. But still, they did clear three out of the four. Where they don't need to do better is on their dip game. Guys, they went 100%. It seems week after week, after they had a rough start, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, a few wars back, definitely have nailed down their dip game. They went 100% going 8 for 8. Their 9s hit at 54%, uh, which did ensure them a few scouts on the bases that they had their eyes on for their 10v10 targets. Uh, FML with very similar stats. Only one of them varied. Uh, FML picking up a solid two 10v10 triples as well. They also cleared three of FYSB's 11s with their Town Hall 10s. 
Uh, the difference in the war, guys, uh, F, uh, from Mont Lava had a dip fail. FYSB did not. FML went six for seven. And that alone right there is what, what was the difference maker. FYSB getting that one star victory. And they are looking very solid going into week 10. All alone in first place right now in the wall breaker uh, division. Uh, big win for FYSB getting closer to the end of the season. Okay, next up, guys, we have Forbidden, who took on Reddit Viper. This was a very interesting war. Uh, Forbidden, through six weeks, was undefeated. They were 6-0, and oh, and then they lost two wars straight. And then we had Reddit Viper, who was pretty much the exact opposite. Very, very shaky through the start of the season and even through the middle of the season. And then it seemed within the last few wars, they had been putting up 10v10s like no other. Uh, so a lot of people were wondering what was going to be the, the outcome of this war, kind of two clans kind of opposite of each other. Forbidden, however, did get the victory. Uh, the final, 99-96, to 96, how did that happen? They actually went ahead and spun a 35v35 uh, with that last update. You can now do friendly wars uh, with 35 uh, so very, very interesting. And this is how they did it, guys. Forbidden. I cannot believe this. Forbidden, guys. Seven 10v10 triples. This was one of seven. What you guys are watching on your screen right now. Uh, as far as their 10v11 game went, uh, they did go three for 11. And on their dips, they went six for seven. So they did have one dip fail. Their nines hit at 65%. Very, very impressive. Uh, which ensure them all kinds of scouts. Uh, Reddit Viper, they still put up, I mean, Forbidden put up seven 10 v 10s, uh, but Reddit Viper still put up three very, very solid. Uh, they just ran into a Forbidden who was very, very eager to get back into that winning column. Uh, but Reddit Viper still put up decent stats. Uh, it was still a very, very close war. Only, only a three-star victory for Forbidden. Uh, Reddit Viper, again, three 10 v 10s. Uh, they cleared three of Forbidden's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. And they did go 100% on their dips. Uh, so Reddit Viper actually did a little bit better than Forbidden as far as the dip game goes. And they hit it 68% is on their talent lines. So they were ahead of Forbidden on a few of these categories. But Forbidden, I mean, you're putting up 7 10 v 10s Watch out. Uh, but huge shout to both these clans. It was a very, very close war. And for those of you wondering at home, the breakdown was 4, 14, 17, and a 35 v 35. Uh, but congratulations to Forbidden for getting back in the winning column. All right, guys, next up, we have Dark Avengers, who took on Valar Mugulis. Uh, we had DA, who lost the uh, last couple wars. We have Valar Mugulis, who, put, who uh, picked up their first victory in Week 8. Uh, but we have DA putting up a solid 86 stars, the final to this war, 86 to 83. So a three-star victory uh, for DA. And they put up very, very impressive numbers top to bottom. I mean, if, if clans put up these numbers and these stats right here, you will win the majority of your wars. Uh, so we have DA who put up three 10v10s. So a huge improvement. They have been pretty shaky throughout the season with their 10v10s. Uh, so showing up, putting three 10v10 triples on the board. Huge, huge improvement. Uh, from previous uh, from previous weeks, uh, they went four for ten on their ten v eleven game, so hitting way above the league average uh, in this war. And they did go a hundred percent on their dips. Uh, they did go seven for seven, and their town hall nines completely wrecked it. They hit at a remarkable eighty percent. So, like I told you guys, from town hall eleven. Uh, their Town Hall 11s down to their Town Hall 9s. Every single Town Hall level uh, performed at their best. Huge shout out to DA for putting up uh, a very, very impressive war. Uh, Vlar Mogulis still had decent stats for the most part. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, Vlar Mogulis still put up four 10v10 triples. Uh, so they definitely had a chance uh, to pull off a victory. Uh, where they fell flat was on their 10v11 game. Uh, they went three for seven. Most of their Town Hall 10 hits went for those 10v10 triples. Uh, so again, they did leave one 11 
Uh, they were not able to double with their Town Hall 10s. The big difference, guys, was they went 4 for 7 on their dips. So their Town Hall 10s cleared as many Town Hall 10s as their Town Hall 11s, if you think about that. Uh, and they did hit it 58% as far as their Town Hall 9 goes. Got to figure out the dips, but huge shout out to DA for putting up a solid 86 stars in a default 410-16 breakdown here in Premier. Okay, next up, guys, we have CWC Brawlers who took on Bad Intentions. Uh, this is also going to be a very, very close war. Both of these clans have been performing very, I mean, they have been very, very hot uh, these last few weeks. But CWC Brawlers getting the edge on Bad Intentions. Uh, the final to this score, uh, the final to this war was 83 to 81. So a solid two star victory for CWC Brawlers. Uh, here's the, uh, we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. Uh, CWC Brawlers, uh, putting up two 10v10 triples. You guys are watching one of them on the screen right now. Uh, the big difference in this war was the 10v11 game. Uh, CWC Brawlers going four for 11. Bad intentions only clearing one Town Hall 11 with their Town Hall 10s. Do not know what happened there, but they went one for 18. Uh, so uh, BI definitely has to figure out what happened. Uh, hopefully they can bounce back and show up in week 10. But going 1 for 18, not going to win you uh, many wars here in Premier. Uh, CWC Brawlers did go 6 for 8 on their dips. Bad intentions hit at 100%, so they had a chance. They definitely had a chance to take down uh, CWC Brawlers. Uh, but based off of only clearing one 11 with their Town Hall 10s, that was the difference maker. But bad intentions, and they also put up a 10v10 triple as well. Uh, both clans hitting uh, just above 50% on their Town Hall 9s. Uh, so they definitely had a chance uh, to take down CUSC Brawlers, uh, seeing as they as CUSC Brawlers did have two dip fails. But best of luck to both of these clans going into week 10. Uh, and congratulations to CUC Brawlers for getting the victory. Okay, next up we have Emphatic Fury, who took on none other than Gahazi Bomber 2. And putting up, again, a solid 86 stars. Uh, they had one of the best wars that they have had uh, so far in Premier. Emphatic Fury looking very strong. Uh, they're going to close out the season very, very strong. Gahazi Bomber 2 definitely flopped uh, this war. Go Again, we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. Uh, wait till you hear what their Town Hall 9s did. Okay, Emphatic Fury, 3 10 v 10 triples, absolutely huge. They cleared all Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s, uh, going 4 for 12, and they went 100% on their dips. This was the money maker right here. Their Town Hall 9s paving the way for the heavy hitters, hitting at a remarkable 73%. So huge shout out to all the Town Hall 9s in Emphatic Fury, putting up an incredible war against Gahazi Bomber 2. Uh, Gahazi Bomber 2. Uh, where they fell flat. They did not have a 10v10 triple this war. Uh, not sure what happened. If in fact, Fury put up some crazy bases, uh, but, Gah but Gahazi Bomber 2 did not have a 10v10. They went 3 for 15 uh, in their 10v11 game. Uh, so definitely were behind in those two categories, seeing as Emphatic Fury cleared uh, the 11s with their 10s. They did go 100% on their dips, and they also hit at an impressive 70%. So both these clans scouted every single town on the map. Emphatic Fury definitely took advantage of it, putting up three 10v10 triples. Shout out to Emphatic Fury for taking down Gahazi Bomber 2 with a solid three-star victory, the final 86-83. to 83. Okay, next up we have uh, Gunma Samurai, one of the hottest clans, uh, or at least tied for the, the hottest clans in Premier, sitting at 8-1 and one now taking down one hive genesis who has also been looking very very strong uh it was still a very very close war ohg definitely put up a fight both clans i mean this was uh, an incredible war i wish i could have watched it uh i mean this was definitely clash of the titans right here uh again we'll go ahead and break down the stats uh, the final to the war 86 to 85 a one-star victory for gunma samurai 
Okay, Gun Moss Samurai pick, uh, picking up two 10v10 triples. Check this out, guys. Going four for nine on their 10v11 game, hitting way above the league average and going 100% on their dips and their Town Hall 9s hit at 71%. So, so many of these clans were absolute fire here in week nine. Uh, very, very impressive. OHG, the thing is, they were just as impressive, you guys. Uh, the difference was the 10v10 triples. Gunma Samurai had two. One Hive Genesis only had one, but they still had a 10v10 triple. And OHG technically did a little bit better in the 10v11 department. They have been looking very, very strong in the 10v11 category throughout, I mean, throughout the season, going four for eight, hitting it in, in a very impressive 50%. And they went 100% on their dips. Uh, their Town Hall 9s hit at 54%. So they did have uh, a few scouts on the Town Hall 10s. Uh, and an absolute incredible war. Shout out to both clans. And a big shout out to Gummy Samurai for pulling off the victory. Best of luck to both of you guys going into week 10. Very, very impressive war putting up those numbers. Okay, next up we have COC Hog Wars, uh, who took on Power COC. Uh, the breakdown to this war, they, they did spin a little heavier than the traditional breakdown. They did spin at 4, 11, 15, so they had one extra Town Hall 10 uh, on the map uh, as, as far, more than the, the regular default. What am I trying to say here? Okay, we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. Both clans kind of struggled. Uh, each one of these clans, either one could have won. Uh, but we have COC Hogwarts getting the edge, a two-star victory over Power COC. Uh, the final 79 to 77, very low-scoring war. COC Hogwarts did have a 10v10 triple. They only went, uh, they only cleared two of Power COC's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s, and they had two dip fails, going five for seven, and they did have to dip quite a few of the nines, only hitting at 41 percent. So you might ask yourself, how did they win? This is why uh, we definitely wanted to highlight this war for you guys. Power COC also had a 10v10 triple, just like COC Hogwarts. The difference here, not sure what happened. Power COC did not clear a single Town Hall 11 with their Town Hall 10s. That alone is what got the victory for COC Hogwarts, as uh, Power COC also went 5 for 7 uh, on their dip game. Where they've been very impressive so far in the season is they hit at 75%. So best of luck to both these clans going into week 10 and COC Hogwarts getting the victory over Power COC. All right, guys, uh, we have a couple more wars to get through. We have Art of War who took on War Addicts uh, in what was a very, very impressive war. Uh, they definitely put on a show against War Addicts, the final to this one. 83 to 78, so a very, very solid five-star victory for Art of War taking down War Addicts. This is how they did it. Uh, they had three 10v10 triples, uh, so huge shout-out to their 10v10 guys on their 10v11 game going four for nine. So again, definitely hitting above the league average. If you're clearing the Town Hall 11s with your Town Hall 10s in Premier, you're above the league average. Uh, so, I mean, definitely going four for nine. Uh, their Town Hall 10s uh, definitely brought it this war. And their Town Hall 11s hitting at 100% on their dips, going eight for eight. Their Town Hall 9s hitting at 58%. So they did have a few scouts throughout the war on those 10v10 targets. Uh, war Addicts still had a decent war in most categories. Now, what I'm talking about is they did have uh, two 10v10 triples, so, you know, definitely a good job there. On their 10v11 game, they did go three for eight, so War Addicts was already ahead of Star uh, just based off of that alone, seeing as Art of War uh, cleared the 11s with their 10s. War, War Axe again going three for eight. Where they fell flat and where they've, where they've suffered a couple, you know, a couple wars throughout the season is their 11v10 dips having three dip fails going five for eight 
So that alone makes up the five stars that between the 10, between Art of War getting one more 10v10, clearing the 11s, and going 100% on their dips. Uh, so each of those heavy hitter categories, uh, they were ahead of War Addict. So definitely brought it this war uh, to get that victory again. Only a couple wars left here in the regular season. Art of War trying to get a shot at the playoff picture, trying to get that wild card. Uh, but huge shout to Art of War uh, for taking down War Axe. Best of luck to both clans going into week 10. All right, guys, this is going to be the last war we're going to be highlighting before we check out uh, a quick glimpse into the playoff picture. We have Varhai Seleke, who took on uh, BD Unbeatables, the final, 84 to 84, but Varhai Seleke winning by just under 1%. Uh, again, the top... Uh, the war was a tie, 84 to 84. So again, the stats are going to be looking very, very similar uh, as we go over them real quick. Uh, Verhei Seleke picking up two 10v10 triples, uh, going two for six. Uh, BD Unbeatables going two for five. So both of them had two 10v10 triples, so very, very tight. Uh, we have Verhei Seleke who went three for 13. Or, no, excuse me, went four for 13 on their 10v11. Uh, hit ups, and you have BDM Beatables who went four for 12. So, pretty much mere stats so far. And we have, uh, we have the dips both having one dip fail. Uh, the difference is, Vahai Slake did have a few more scouts, uh, BDM Beatables did not have any. Uh, they only hit at 41%. So, their nines definitely struggled to take down for high Seleke's town hall nines. They did have to dip uh, quite a few of them with their town hall tens, which pulled away uh, from possibly getting potential, you know, more 10 v 10s. Uh, but huge shout to for high Seleke for taking down BD and beatables and getting the victory 84 to 80. All right, guys, here it is. The playoff picture uh, getting very, very close to the end, like I've said a few times in this video, only two wars left before we find out who has made it into the playoffs. If it, it hypothetically, if it ended right now after week nine, these would be the 16 clans going to the playoffs. We'll go ahead and break it down real quick, starting from the top, where we have Swarm Synergy. Uh, so basically how this works is you have the first place team uh, you have the first place team in each division automatically going to the playoffs. The way the next eight the the next eight clans that go uh, to the playoffs is the clans with the best record who are in second place. I hope that makes sense. That's why you see, uh, for example, Forbidden, Nottingham, One Hive Genesis, and Dark Avengers. Uh, all four of these clans within. Uh, the minor division could potentially all be going to the playoffs. Uh, we'll have to see how it ends, but that's how it works. The first place clans in each division automatically go. The clans with the best record, the next best eight clans uh, with the best record are the other eight clans going to the playoffs. That's how we make up the 16. We have Swarm Synergy, Gunma Samurai, Forbidden, for High Seleke, King Jeffrey, FYSB, Bad Intentions, Above and Beyond. Uh, all These are the eight division leaders, uh, in, in, well, in each eight divisions, that will be going to the playoffs, again, if it ended right now. Only time will tell how this is going to shift around. This is where it gets really, really competitive, uh, especially with some of these clans that have pulled three wars ahead of the second place clan, you know that they're going to be ending the season in first place. Where it gets really competitive is the wild card slots. Uh, so we have Grumpy Old Men, Nottingham, Dark Looter X, One Hive Genesis, Dark Avengers, From Molten Lava, COC Brawlers, and Go to Borks Krieger down there at the very bottom, uh, all potentially going to the playoffs. Uh, so definitely these these bottom eight clans is pretty much a must win from here on out because you have a lot of clans underneath, for example, Gotobox Krieger, 
uh, who are just off the Richter scale. Uh, I mean, one win and one loss could completely shift all this around, uh, especially the wild card slots. Again, a lot of the first place clans are already two, if not three wars ahead of the clan in, in, uh, second place. So again, where it gets very, very competitive is these wild card slots. And like I've said, only time will tell how this will end. We got two weeks left, guys. Uh, so very, very pumped to see how this season is going to end before we get into, uh, before we get into the playoffs. But that right there is the current playoff picture. Uh, the next two league recaps that we do, uh, we'll see how this shifts around and see how this changes. Stay tuned to find out. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, make sure you like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not already and stay tuned for some more CWL content coming your guys' way. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS and I'll see you in the very next video.